uh, another episode of has lecture series uh, today we have uh, dr hari with us uh, who is a family medicine specialist and is also a, a assistant dean at one of the renowned medical colleges in malaysia has experience of around 20 years now in family medicine so huge benefit of he being us on this show i hope he will uh, share his uh, own experience uh, and which will enrich the learning on our side uh, we have dr sapna uh, who is a clinical epidemiologist and i will be guiding through the trucks uh, throughout the process uh, so welcome you all on the show and let's uh, start with the session now today's session is going to be on uh, gastroenteritis in under 5 children so we start up with a case a boy who is accompanied by his mother presents with chief complaint of diarrhea his mother informed that the boy had suffered from four episodes of uh, non bloody loose stools since yesterday the boy also has diffuse uh, mild colic abdominal pain uh, from yesterday uh, the child exhibited poor energy and poor appetite uh, with constant nausea so that's important again nausea is there but has not vomited till now uh, mother also reported that the boy has mild fever from the last 12 hours uh, there is no significant medical and surgical history and parents are definitely worried about the case so that's the usual way how these cases are present um, in casualties um, so let's start discussing about the case uh, i would like dr hari to add um, uh and uh, diagnostic features dr hari okay when we talk about uh, clinical features of diarrhea it's good to remember the uh, who classification which is which is very practical yeah so on taking the history and examination we should uh, basically decide whether the child has no dehydration some dehydration or severe dehydration now what are the clinical features of uh, each of these uh, we can see in the table when there is no clinically detectable dehydration how the child appears so basically child appears very well alert responsive urine output is normal skin color warm extremities and uh, when there is already clinical dehydration yes the child appears unwell there is altered responsiveness decreased urine output yes extremities are still warm <laughs> whereas when the child goes into clinical shock yes you can see the difference there is decreased level of consciousness yeah. skin is pale mottled with old extremities yeah so it's so basically it's that uh, clinical diagnosis that we are talk- talking of yes yeah so um Uh, taking that uh, uh, with now dr sapna who can add on to, to the epidemiology of uh, the disease right uh, uh, as we all are aware gastroenteritis is a very common uh, illness of childhood and around 10.2 million children worldwide die before their fifth birthday uh, even today uh, these deaths are high among low and middle income countries and that's, that's a serious, serious issue, issue because it's not it's only gastroenteritis but it is a hereditary associated with gastroenteritis and the severe one, one that is when the child will be shocked when it can result in a great deal of mortality among these very young and tender children uh, as the percentage of people who have who still lack a safe water supply around 1 million all over the world Okay. And another 2.6 million do not have uh, adequate sanitation facilities. Now we need to take into account that a safe water and sanitation are two major issues when we talk about curtailing gastroenteritis. So it's a huge magnitude of problem. Uh, yes, it is a very huge magnitude, and also the infective causes are the most important ones when we consider gastroenteritis. Yeah, uh, Doctor Hari, can you add on on uh, the you know uh, the causes for these kind of diarrhea the causes are mostly uh, we have bacterial and virus but yes. mostly it is due to viruses uh-huh. and when we talk about uh, children below 5 years of course uh, rotavirus yeah represents the most important viral pathogen worldwide okay 
So, we are uh, into viral gastroenteritis when we talk of, of underfly gastroenteritis. Uh, so, uh, passing on the, again to Dr. Aharin, uh, just what the treatment, meant, in fact, for uh, viral gastroenteritis is oral rehydration solution. Uh, uh, so, we are talking of actually uh, um, a, a, a drug which changed the scenario and which brought down the mortality associated with ORS um, uh, in around 30, 40 years back. So, it, it's kind of a miracle uh, of the last century. Uh, so, we are here talking of oral rehydration solution. So, Dr. Hari, can you just add a note on um, uh, OR, ORS, that is oral rehydration solution? Well, oral rehydration solution, like you said, it is a mainstay treatment. Yeah. So, if you just give one drug <laughs> for treatment, that has to be it. Yeah. So, we have uh, various compositions actually. Now, what we are using is WHO's reduced uh, osmolarity ORS uh, solutions. Mm. And uh, what's the difference is, we can see in the table, basically the content of uh, glucose, uh, sodium, and chloride, they differ in each uh, uh, type of uh, ORS. So, and of course, the overall osmolarity also yes. differs. So, uh, nowadays, like I said, we are using the reduced osmolarity uh, ORS, mm -hmm. except in situations where we suspect cholera. Yeah. When we suspect cholera, we give the standard ORS solution. Yeah. Yeah. So the o, so the ORS will contain glucose, sodium, chloride, potassium, and citrate. Of course, citrate is to increase the shell life, right? and the reduced osmolarity stands to around 245 millimoles uh, uh, per liter. Uh, now here we are talking of the co-transporter mechanism of glucose and sodium. One molecule of glucose will take with it one molecule of sodium, and where sodium goes, the water will follow. So it's kind of uh, you are trying to absorb water by taking help of the co-transporter mechanisms like glucose and sodium, which remains intact even in the very severe of diarrhea. So that's where the mechanism uh, come into picture. So when you talk of, of ORS. Uh, Dr. Sapna, can, can you add on, uh, there is something called as homemade ORS, super ORS. Uh, right. Uh, when we talk about homemade oral rehydration solution, uh, we are not looking at uh, oral rehydration solution. Using the packets which are available, we are talking of uh, oral rehydration by using carbohydrates like uh, preparing porridge from rice, which is known as kanji. Which, which will be the supplement for the glucose, glucose which will replace the glucose, glucose uh, in, a in a standard, standard uh, ORS solution. solution. So, so this, this homemade ORS, ORS uh, is, is going, going to help replace, replace the, the glucose as, as well as the salts, salts which have been lost, lost from, from the body, body of the, of the child. child. Now, now another, another way, way of preparing oral rehydration salt solution is by taking sugar, salt, water and mixing it up. But the, but the whole, whole uh, idea, idea is how, how to make this homemade ORS. ORS. It requires it proper education when we talk about preparing this homemade ORS. ORS. Because, because here, as Dr. Hari has mentioned, mentioned the emphasis lies on using low osmolarity uh, ORS, ORS solutions, for which we need to take appropriate amount of sugar and salt. And salt. So, so the standard, standard which is talked about for homemade ORS is 6 teaspoons of sugar and 2 pinch salt. Add it to one, one liter of potable, potable water. water. Now the now question, question comes, comes whether it should be boiled, boiled water and boiled and cooled water. water. Uh, uh, when we, we talk, talk about low income, income countries, when we talk about areas, areas where there is uh, less access to safe water, water. We, we look at water which at least appears clear, clear doesn't have any physical <laughs> impurities, <laughs> doesn't <laughs> have any odor, because yes. that should be enough to prepare a sugar salt solution. The yes. only important thing which we need to educate the mothers, the mothers or the, the person who is taking care of the child is, is that, that the water should be 1 liter in quantity. The sugar quantity should be 6 teaspoons. Okay. Now how to count sometimes 6 teaspoons is a practical issue. So yes. a fistful of sugar uh -huh. and 2 pinch salt. 
Okay. This solution can be made and can be used up to 24 hours. We should okay. not be exceeding a day's time to use oh. this solution. So around 24 hours. Yes. So that's about homemade ORS. Yeah. Uh, going further on ORS, uh, Dr. Hari, can you just, just let me know about uh, the dosage for ORS that's available in the market? Okay, basically the ORS comes in a sachet yeah. Yeah. and uh, we are to advise mothers to dissolve that sachet in a cup uh -huh. of uh, water. Okay. And uh, the solution when you're talking about uh, young children, you can use a spoon and a clean cup, mm -hmm. a cup full of ORS mm -hmm. to uh, feed the uh, children. Mm -hmm. And uh, for infants, we can make use of a dropper and a syringe without the needle, of course. Okay. And we can put in small amounts of solution into the mouth. Yes. Uh, children under two years of age, we can offer them teaspoonful every one to two minutes okay and uh, of course older children can take frequent sips directly from the cup uh -huh. now uh, sometimes what happens is there is vomiting which uh, often occurs within the first hour or two yes treatment. yes and uh, this happens when children drink the solution too quickly uh -huh. so what can we do okay what can we advise the parents? yeah yes well uh, it's been found that this uh, vomiting initially rarely prevents uh, successful oral rehydration. Okay. Since most of the fluid is ultimately absorbed. Okay. So we can, if the child vomits, we can advise the parents to wait for five to ten minutes, mm -hmm. and then start giving ORS again, mm -hmm. but maybe more slowly. So say a, a spoonful every two to three minutes. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. There is some talk of an addition of zinc to ORS. Can you just elaborate on that? Yes, Dr. Sapna? Yeah, when we talk about zinc, it's about mostly talked about maintaining the epithelial integrity or bringing the epithelial lining back to normal. Okay. So zinc has a role to play when we talk about uh, bringing it back to normal. It doesn't have any effect immediately as such. Yeah. So it can have a protective effect in uh, maybe uh, in the maintenance phase of controlling the gastroenteritis episode. Okay. Uh, there is also some uh, talk about use of vitamin A solutions. Again, the regeneration of, of epithelium. Yes. So vitamin A also has the same uh, function. Oh. And uh, vitamin, vitamin A solutions can be uh, safely administered to all children who are over 9 months, months of age. And okay. it comes in the form of a solution. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if given the right dosage after 9 months, oh. does it have, doesn't it show up the repetitive of effects. Okay. Uh, Dr. Hari, to you, uh, uh, can you just guide us uh, on breastfeeding, you know, types of foods that can be given when the child is taking ORS or is having gastroenteritis? Well, basically what we advise parents is there is no um, uh, restriction in the type of food uh -huh. so, uh, except the giving of uh, sweet uh, beverages, uh -huh. carbonated drinks uh -huh. and so on. But otherwise whatever the child can take, uh -huh. they can carry on giving. So there is no to uh, carbonated drinks, uh, yeah. uh, but breastfeeding is okay. Yes, yes. Uh, but what about children who are on uh, powdered milk or with uh, buffalo milk? Anything on uh, Dr. Sapna? Uh, actually, for them, uh, they can continue for, with that milk, but it has to be in a diluted form. Uh -huh. So that it is easy to digest. It okay. cannot be taken in the same uh, maybe quantity as they were taking before they had this episode. So even with the severe diarrhea, they can just continue on with all these foods? Uh, they can continue, but sometimes what happens is if there is vomiting associated with diarrhea, uh, generally uh, we would advise to keep the child uh, of milk, especially uh, if it is powdered milk, milk or if it is cow milk, milk or uh, any buffalo milk, milk, not, not mother's milk. Okay, but mother's milk is... Mother's can milk is always advised and it should not be stopped in any condition. 
yeah so so but the children who are uh, in a age group where they are now transforming from liquid food to solid food any any guideline anything on that For these kids, actually, uh, it becomes sometimes quite challenging to look at yeah. what should be given and what should not be given. So, uh, if they are in the weaning mode and they are trying to increase complementary foods, we uh, prefer giving rice kanji, as I said before. So, it's rice, rice porridge. Yeah, we, we call kanji in Asia, is it? Yes, we call it kanji. And, uh, it is the best available and the best. Uh, food which is very easy to digest even in that condition where the uh, epithelial line is like not so uh, yeah, just to add on, on super ors which has that rice Um, the rice has complex carbohydrates which keep on uh, hydrolyzing um, uh, at a very slow pace uh, so the sugar is made available for a very long time for it to transfer along with sodium Uh, so that's the way ors helps uh, which is in addition to the ors mechanisms we just uh, mentioned Uh, so on that uh, so, uh, dr hari there are few other drugs that we use the first ones are about anti emetic drugs because nausea vomiting is always associated with uh, uh, these kind of gastroenteritis so what is your uh, main stake uh, concerns about using metoclopramide or ondansetron well, these uh, drugs metoclopramide ondansetron they are sometimes given because uh, to allay the fears on the part of the mother yeah the child is uh, nauseated vomiting doesn't want to drink uh-huh. uh ors even hmm. but uh, somehow there is not enough uh, evidence on densetron there have been some studies done yeah but uh, there have been some reports of uh, increased uh, frequency of uh, diarrhea yeah on densetron and metoclopramide so they say enough there aren't enough uh, studies yeah. yet but so it is still uh, widely used of course uh, on densetron is very expensive yeah so commonly metoclopramide is uh, given again metoclopramide will share i think the extraoperamental side effects uh, yeah. rarely but they come about in some patients uh, i think on densetron is the one that we are looking for but again depends upon the essential drug list of a country economic condition and so on which drug to use and so on uh, there is also talk on using uh, spectite that is adsorbents like kaolin spectite activated charcoal so anything on those drugs well uh, spectite spectite there have been some studies and uh, uh, it is considered uh, an effective antidiarrheal yeah and uh, seemingly without any uh, adverse effects at least in the short term use yeah. so that may be used okay it reduces the hospitalization or uh, the days from which the child is i mean uh, the, uh, the infection rates something on that hospitalization uh, is basically for children who are in uh, shock yeah or severely dehydrated yeah unable to tolerate uh, orally and require iv fluid therapy yeah uh, there are also talks on using probiotics uh, the good bacteria yeah. uh, i don't know how much they are used uh, and how effective they are uh, but again anything from your side on probiotics Huh. especially in uh, by private practitioners yeah okay. and uh, there have been some studies done yeah and, uh, well it uh, appears to shorten the duration of diarrhea mm-hmm. it also reduces the stool frequency mm-hmm. but uh, uh, unfortunately for prebiotics yeah. there aren't uh, enough studies mm. that have been done to Uh, prove any benefit yeah there is one more drug uh, that is uh, recently approved um, n caffeinase inhibitor that is rasica do do thril uh, yes. uh, it seems to be anti secretory drug it acts through the opioid receptors uh, but doesn't have the anti motility effect uh, now that drug has seen to be highly effective in uh, especially breaking down the episodes of diarrhea associated with uh, viral gastroenteritis yes. 
but again the trials on that are going on so have you been using gasiga do thrill uh, any any guess on that i mean any any points that you need to make on that well it's a fairly new uh, yeah term. yeah so it has not been uh, widely introduced yeah. here yet yeah. but uh, it is said that it, again it reduces the stool output yeah. by 48 hours yeah and quite well tolerated and uh, very few side effects very few side effects yes uh, here we need to make a point that anti motility drugs like loperamide uh, are not to be used uh, so, as a general point, uh, when we are treating viral gastroenteritis, we say no to loperamide. Uh, we use them somewhere else, but not definitely with any of infectious uh, diarrhea. Uh, so, just a point that I need to make uh, because that can increase the chances of spreading of the infection and uh, putting the patient into septicemia. So, these are few drugs um, that uh, can help the child. Uh, but the ORS is, is the mainstay treatment uh, when we talk of um, viral gastroenteritis. Uh, Dr. Sapna, to you, um, the, uh, you know about rotavirus vaccine. Uh, uh, anything on that? Okay. Now, this is <coughs> Sorry. This is something quite uh, significant, significant, and uh, nowadays the World Health Organization does uh, suggest, suggest and recommend. And Use of rotavirus vaccines, uh, especially in low income and middle income countries, uh, for primary immunization. Uh, as we all are aware, immunization is provided free of cost at government health centers uh, all, all over the world. But rotavirus vaccine is not yet introduced as one of the vaccines within uh, the primary immunization schedule. However, uh, currently there are two brands of the vaccine available and they are, and they are given, given as early as the sixth week, week of life. Until, until the 15th week. The, the maximum, maximum age by which rotavirus vaccine can be given is 32 30 weeks after birth. So, so what I mean by this is within the first year, year of life, the child, the child should have received the rotavirus vaccine, vaccine for it to be effective. Okay, so the use of vaccine for uh, in children who are over one year of age is, is practically lethal. Okay. And so as the I said, there are two uh, brands, brands available. available. One, one is given uh, in three doses, doses. the other mm -hmm. one is given in two doses. Okay. And uh, uh, in uh, both the doses, the time duration between two doses is recommended to be four weeks. So at least a gap of four weeks is recommended between any two doses of this one. So the child in the case may not be, you know. Oh yes, the child in this case, our case, uh, is not required to have any vaccine because uh, it's not going to be useful for the child in this case. Yeah. Uh, natural immunity through the infection. Yeah. Rather than uh, through the vaccine. Okay. Uh, so, Dr. Hari, to you, uh, something on prevention during the, I know you want to prevent uh, these episodes uh, happening again and again. So, any preventive aspect? Well, we should uh, basically advise uh, parents and children uh -huh. uh, to use safe water, yeah. correct uh, hand washing techniques, yeah. safety use of latrines and uh, safe uh, disposal of stools as well. Mm -hmm. so washing hands with soap in running water yeah. before feeding, yeah. before, uh, uh, after handling a child with uh, acute diarrheal episode, uh -huh. uh, after going to the toilet or changing nappies, all these they sound very trivial but very important huh. to yes. parents regarding this and yeah. want to use towels which are infected, not yes. to share towels. Yes. These are important aspects. Yeah. Uh, so to summarize what we had done, there, so if you are talking of gastroenteritis in Enderfi, mostly it comes with viral um, origin, rotavirus, um, but there could be other causes, yeah, the doctor needs to look into it. Uh, but if it's a viral gastroenteritis, then the main treatment remains as low osmolarity ORS, uh, which contains uh, the salts which are uh, depleted when the patient has diarrhea and vomiting. Uh, regarding use of other drugs, there is no clear cut evidence whether they will be of any benefit uh, to the child or not. But then uh, practice says that some drugs uh, uh, can be of use, uh, can be of use um, when you are uh, when the child suffers from gastroenteritis to come out of uh, the infection quickly. Uh, 
Dr. Hari, can you add a note uh, from your side? Yeah, um, I thought of just mentioning. Yeah. Um, a common uh, question parents tend to ask is when can the child resume activity or go back to school? Yeah, that that's important. Yeah. So normally we advise children not to go back to school until. 48 hours have passed since the last episode yeah. of uh, diarrhea or vomiting. Yeah. We also advise them not to swim in uh, swimming pools yeah. two weeks uh -huh. after the last episode of uh, diarrhea. diarrhea. I yeah. think this is... We are, you know, it's very important, very important because you don't want them to come in uh, contact with the other children. So yeah. that, that's... Dr. Sapna... And uh, I would like to just add about ORS. Uh, yeah. Now in this uh, era of technology, yeah. uh, when we consider the oral rehydration salts, yeah. they are considered as an appropriate technology when we talk about primary health care. Yes. Because it's the most uh, easily available actually, cost yeah. effective and uh, the best way to prevent dehydration in a child with gastroenteritis. But the yeah. word appropriate there again is very important because the preparation of the salt solution itself is yeah. a skill. It requires proper education. And that's not the only in a, only thing which is enough. We also need, as Dr. Hari has highlighted, we also need to educate people on use of safe water and yeah. good sanitation practices yeah. in order to prevent future. So RSE is like a rocket science, isn't it? <laughs> we can think about it from point of view of gastroenteritis. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yes, I think I end the discussion uh, on gastroenteritis and five. I hope you got uh, whatever we said um, in this discussion. A very helpful discussion. A lot of points came in apart from drugs. Uh, very happy about that. Um, do keep watching the channel. Do subscribe. Thank you. Bye.